Human trafficking and exploitation is an ongoing problem throughout the world, even in developed countries like the United States and Canada. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we're speaking with author Benjamin Perrin about his book, Invisible Chains, and about putting an end to modern day slavery. So tell us about your book, Invisible Chains. Many people, including myself, thought human trafficking only happened overseas. I, I started working on this issue in Cambodia 10 years ago. Um, this book, uh, for the very first time, reveals that this is happening in our communities. It's happening right across the country, including here in, in Quebec. It involves not just uh, women brought in from abroad and exploited in the sex trade, it also includes Canadian victims. Uh, exploited in our own country in the sex trade and, and in some cases trafficked to the United States. The victims are also men. Uh, one in four uh, foreign trafficking victims in Canada are men. And a recent uh, case in, in Hamilton uh, really uh, explodes that problem. There were 19 men from Hungary brought in, forced to work on construction sites for no pay, locked in basements and fed only scraps of food once a day. So, you know, this is something which is happening in our communities and the reason why the book is called Invisible Chains is that these people who are being exploited by these traffickers are being controlled by chains that are just as powerful as the physical chains that we knew from the slavery of old, but these chains are not able to be seen just by meeting the person. People often say, well, why don't they just call the police or why don't they escape? And some victims try to escape and they and they pay the price dearly if they're not successful. Um, some of them do escape and they that's how we know about these cases. But we, we've got to be so careful here, we're not blaming the victim. That's a really common response that some people have here. How has the internet changed the game for human traffickers? Well, it's it's made it far more effective. Um, at once, a victim who's advertised on Craigslist is fully visible, right? Men can purchase her, the traffickers can lower prices, which they do, post photos, and it's free. And they believe it's anonymous, which it turns out it, it actually is not necessarily. Um, and at the same time, though, they can move their victims constantly. So people often say, well, you know, why aren't you focusing on, on those weekly newspapers with all those ads in the back. I actually take a shot at them as well in this book. I say that if you're going to collect a, a, advertising revenue from an escort agency, you need to do some due diligence. At least spot check a few of them because we know that escort agencies have been used as fronts for sex trafficking in Canada. In fact, every outlet that you can think of, strip clubs, escort agencies, massage parlors, all have found uh, human trafficking victims in them. You focus specifically on the problem in Canada, but tell us about this problem throughout the world. This is a, a global problem and um, the U.S. State Department uh, puts out an annual report every year and it ranks countries around the world. There's not a single country that is not affected in some way by this, either as a, a source country, meaning that their, their citizens become victims, uh, as a transit point, uh, or as a destination where the exploitation is happening. In Canada's case, it's all three methods of human trafficking that we've got. And so this problem has really flourished um, below the radar for years now. You know, why are people hearing about it now? Well, partly because it's only been a crime for five years. That's it. It was not a crime to traffic in people until 2005 in the criminal code. As one of the foremost experts on this topic, tell us about some of the research that you've undertaken to learn more about this problem. Well, I, I determined to sort of not go for anecdotal information. There, there was a lot of stuff about human trafficking in Canada written a few years ago, which they'd make big statements like, oh, trafficked victims come from Asia. That turns out to be true, but it doesn't give you enough information to provide an intervention. How are they coming here? What methods of control are their traffickers using? Which countries specifically in Asia, which is, happens to be a pretty big continent? And so we've been able to really get down to the bottom of this sort of thing. Um, we found out that the top four source countries for uh, foreign trafficking to Canada are uh, China, yeah. the Philippines, Romania, and Moldova. And what's common to all four countries is they have all been um, uh, criticized for failing to deal with the problem. In some cases, they're complicit in organized crime, in the case of Moldova, for example. Corruption also is part of the problem. And in other cases, for example, with China, victims who return home to China are eventually punished by the state because they're viewed as having tarnished the reputation of the country. This is something you often hear is uh, the sex trade is called the world's oldest profession. Well, um, there's a lot of people now who say, well, it's the oldest oppression and we don't have to accept it any more than we accepted discrimination against people's ethnic backgrounds, slavery, or that women couldn't vote. These were things that were also thousands of years in the making. And one day we stood up against them. And that's really why I hope this book can be a, a powerful call for action here in Canada. Thank you very much. Thank you.